You get to speak for 10 minutes uninterrupted with your wife in the same room. <laughs> So anyway, I spoke to Roland as I was uh, preparing to write the speech. I, uh, I spoke to him right and I said, look, how much should I put in and what should I put out? So I made a list. And that was the list of the stuff that we could put in. The stuff that we were leaving out was saved on two lists that I'd be on Facebook later on. Uh, I, I met Roland uh, for the first time, I believe, around May 1985. Uh, it was at an orientation for Summerhill College where we both went to secondary school. A couple of things have changed. I had a lot of hair then and he didn't look pregnant. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the first thing I noticed about him, the, re the, first, the very first thing that I noticed about Roland is he was eating a real culture. Or for our, our, our American friends, he was a redneck. So it comes as absolutely no surprise that Roland has found himself living down in the uh, deep south of Alabama, marrying a southern belle called Barbara Dempsey. Sly goes answer to Billy Ray Cyrus. <laughs> As I said before, there's a, there's a, there's a lot of things that um, I can't tell you about Roland, and there's an awful lot of things that I won't. For example, <laughs> I definitely, definitely will not be telling you about the six hours I spent on Christmas Day 1998 searching the uh, banks of the Hudson River, only to find him asleep in the janitor's office of the uh, apartment we were staying in. Uh, I won't be telling you about the time that uh, I got my appendix out in 1989, and so jealous was Roman that I was going to miss my school exams that he tried to break his own fingers. <laughs> Never said he was an intelligent man. And then there was the time he got drunk on cherry at poor Orla's communion and needed medical attention. <laughs> but I'm definitely going to tell you about the time that Roman got a new pair of shoes. <laughs> about the bottom of lovely new pair of shoes, they were lovely. 40 pounds each. They were really, really expensive shoes, right? <laughs> yeah. And so happy was Roman with his shoes that he said he was going to break them in in Toff's nightclub. So he went in for a little dance in Toff's, he broke them in there, right? And when he came home, he was so tired from all the dancing that he fell asleep under the tree in the front garden. <laughs> that the dancing will do that to you. But anyway, he woke up, nice and refreshed, he went into his house and into his bed. A couple hours later, I think Melda woke him up for mass, and there was consternation in the house because the shoes, the brand new shoes, were nowhere to be found. So there was stress, and the dinner was Sunday, dinner was ruined, the whole lot. So to relieve a little bit of tension, Louis went out for a walk in the back garden and there underneath the tree neatly placed together was the two shoes and the wallet inside of it. To Barbara. To Barbara. I mean this sincerely. He's your bloody responsibility. <laughs> and I've, I've made a list of people that you might ring before you ring me if there's ever a problem. <laughs> Ghostbusters, Oprah Winfrey, the Dalai Lama, anyone, because we're sick like that. <laughs> Many of you may not be aware that Barbara changed her religion to be, to, to be here today. She converted to Catholicism, which is an incredible thing to do. <laughs> You wouldn't have had it an island if somebody changed their religion not to marry them, but you're either absolutely in love with them or certified in sin. <laughs> Unfortunately, Barbara's mother is unwell, uh, as we know at the moment, and she could not travel to see it. So she is uh, been looked after by her grandmother, Dorothy, who is 91 and in 10 times better shape than Roland. <laughs> Barbara's father, Neil, passed away in 1984, and I, I think you know, you'll all agree with me that he would be so proud of how you looked today. He would be so proud of the, uh, the, the beautiful wedding that you've organized, and, and he'd be so proud of the friends that you've made here in Sligo. Not sure what he would uh, think about you marrying one of the characters from One Blue Over the Cuckoo's Nest. <laughs> To St. Louis and St. Imelda of Ramsborough. 
I have no doubt that in many years to come, when you're walking up to the pearly gates, it'll be God himself that comes down with a bu bunch of flowers and a box of roses. That's it. We're awful sorry about that. That was an experiment. We didn't think it was that I had the opportunity to visit uh, Roland and Barbara in Alabama about six weeks ago. And you would be incredibly proud of what they have built. Their home, a fantastic home, a fantastic business. They have the respect of all their peers, their friends. They really, really have stepped up to the mark. And the people who have been in the bar in Alabama would agree with me. It is really top class, a top class Irish bar. And an absolute credit to both of you for building that business. And finally, to Roland, you have been an incredible friend. You really have. And to Barbara, we wish both of you a life of love, happiness, and good health. And I can assure you that with Roland involved, there will never be a dull moment. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.